Dr. Joseph Maldonado is um, a urologist in upstate New York. He's president of the Society of Cryptojudaic Studies, as well as the Medical Scientific Educational Foundation in New York. He's immediate past president of the Medical Society of the State of New York and former assistant clinical dean at Tura College of Osteopathic Medicine. He received his medical education at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and holds several degrees from Oxford and Cambridge universities in England. Two years ago, he discovered his anusim roots while doing genealogical research. I'd like to have Dr. Doug Maldonado come here, please tell the story. I'd like to thank Avi and Shlomo for inviting me to speak this afternoon. I'm grateful to the Institute and to Jack Cohen, a member of the Board of Directors of the Institute, for being here for me when so many were unable or unprepared to help me in my journey of return. One and a half years ago, I sat at this conference in Netanya trying to make sense of the discoveries that I had made. During that conference, I attended my first shul. In Netanya, I met others and also understood what drove me to find my way home. When Shlomo took me to the Sephardic shul in Netanya, I knew I was home. My mind understood no Hebrew, but my heart and soul understood it all. But how did I get to that point in Netanya? I was born in New York City, my parents were born in Puerto Rico. My father was born in a coastal town called Manati. My mother was born in the interior of the island in a town called Utuado. And so the early years of doing my research, um, it was collecting family stories and then taking these trips to the island and taking trips to Spain and doing research in the civil demographics offices and the Catholic churches. And somewhere in the mid-2000 uh, to late 2000, uh, I started focusing a little bit on my mother's genealogy, uh, made some inquiries on my mother's maiden name, which was Marrero, and a fellow named Harry Stein, who ran a website named sephardim.com, writes back to me and says, oh, your mother's name is Sephardic. So I put it in the back of the list and didn't do a whole lot on that, was curious about it, um, and periodically would hear something, would explore. Um, but it wasn't until two years ago, I stumble upon a tree, and that tree takes us back to the 1500s. And I felt I had hit the mother load. And so here I was with something that is what I call my Catholic version of a ketubah, because the Catholic Church has very kindly documented for me back to the 1500s, every generation from my grandmother back to the 1500s, every relative marrying someone who is a second, third, or fourth cousin. I discover one that goes from Cologne to Antwerp, Antwerp to the Canary Islands. When he goes from Antwerp to the Canary Islands, he's Jacome, Mont uh, Jacome um, Grunenberg, who in the Canary Islands becomes Jacome Monteverdi. The same name, just translated into Spanish. Um, Jacob Monteverdi is one of my ancestors. Jacob Monteverdi wound up dying in Seville, awaiting for the Inquisition. Uh, he was accused of having made comments about the, uh, the god of the Hebrews who made the wonderful skies, and the second accusation launched against him was the fact that he did not go to mass on a regular uh, every week and therefore he must be a Jew. And so he wound up dying, awaiting trial. His son also died uh, in the Inquisition. So all of these things, the question was, what do I do about all of these discoveries that I made? You know, does, does discovering that you had ancestors who had these migratory patterns, the names that were Jewish names, ancestors who had gone through the Inquisition, is that any different than discovering that your name is Norwegian or that you're Norwegian? You know, why do you need to do something about this? And most of my friends said, Joe, you're Joe. You know, just, you're Joe. You don't need to go changing religions or doing anything about this. And so for me, it was a question about what do I do about this? And as I sat and I read some of the stories of what people had gone through, I came back from Israel, came back to New York, and I said, um, 
if I don't do something about this, then what I have said is that what the Inquisition did to my ancestors is fine by me. I have to make a personal choice about what I do in response to what happened to the Inquisition. And my choice was to make a return. I decided that I would make that return via the Orthodox route. And um, I did this, and this May, Rabbi Pesach Krohn, who's very well known to some of you, um, did my Hatafat Dambrit. And I can't tell you how happy I am with no regrets. I have a family that has very mixed feelings about this, none of them angry. Uh, this past December, my cousin who's with me was very kind and gave me a wonderful antique box that plays the Israeli national anthem. I got Hanukkah cards. Um, my mother read the Chumash in December, and I have videos just showing my mother shuckling without her really understanding what she's doing as she's doing this. And so, Jeannie, yes, it's the Neshema. That's what it's about. So thank you very much, and thank you for sticking around.